Hey, good morning. Michael Lipinski again. Burning the midnight oil. Persisting. We've got to get through this, um, this Revit uh, Mastering Architecture. Now, um, we're getting into Chapter 19, annotating your design, and we've been through a lot. Um, and um, what I've done was um, I've prepared a little bit uh, prior to, uh, to getting this started, just to give you a better idea of uh, where we're trying to get to. Um, th this level of, uh, of expertise. Now, I know it could very well be that um, it may not appear on the surface that there is one, but there is a method to my madness. So what I've done was just to give you some examples of some of the design documentation that you may be required to, to uh, convey. And I, I, I've decided to use a couple of different firms. So I have a, a real-world scenario here where we had uh, Johnson Controls, who was a consultant, over at the related project at 30 Hudson Yards, um, but adding additional components to the uh, additional uh, the uh, existing fire alarm system. And as you can see, um, they, they have their, their title block, and we talked about scheduling, and we didn't really get into keynote legends just yet, but um, you can see there's some, an operating sequence, and, 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 and these, these, uh, these drawings are required for submission and for testing purposes. So we had talked a little earlier about leaving um, sheet placeholders from the consultants. And this is an example where uh, you would incorporate these into, uh, we could incorporate them into your, uh, your design documents. So I'm sure uh, the folks, some folks that are paying attention has, have seen these before. But again, this is an instance where the consultant would have to coordinate with the architect on the design end uh, to get um, these devices and these zones and these areas all um, uh, coordinated so that um, the fire alarm system works or you won't get a certificate of occupancy. So it was an in interesting project. Um, I played a, a small part in it, uh, not in the fire alarm end of it, but a, a little bit of the uh, medium voltage distribution. Um, connecting some closets to some risers and, and making some tri tricky turns. Uh, this area was pretty tricky right here. This was the main riser chase and the electrical rooms were over here. So, um, yeah, it was an interesting project. It was an interesting project. Uh, in any event, uh, I just wanted to bring this to your attention. Um, this is... Uh, not an insurmountable task, not an insurmountable task. Granted, I don't expect you to go out and design an obelisk right out of the box, but there's absolutely no reason why you couldn't apply some of these skills and get your foot in the door and then ask a lot of questions. And, and you'll find um, some folks are eager to, uh, to bring in the loop. Some folks are eager to bring, bring in the loop. Others, other, others aren't. So uh, before we get into annotating the design, again, I just wanted to um, to bring this up as an example um, because you know these are uh, devices that, that that need to be uh, to be installed, and uh, the coordination plays a huge part of it. You can't have um, mislabeled rooms. And, we can't have mislabeled zones, and drawings have to, they have to be cohesive. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, we talked about you know, 2D details, and this isn't a three-dimensional model. I, 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 I'm not gonna lead you down that path, but um, these views that we see, uh, are derived from these models that we create. Now this is the, uh, the Johnson controls, like I said. And just to uh, give them a little bit of a plug here. I'm just kidding. I, really, I have Bluebeam and I have Adobe, but I just figured I'll open up in the browser. Um, so again, if you're interested in hiring a, a top-notch consultant, um, you know, this, is, uh, this is the creme de la creme. And I, I don't really need to say much more. But, um, yeah, so that's the uh, 30,000 Yards project. 
Um, and then we have um, the, the LaGuardia Airport, LaGuardia Airport project. You see the revision schedule um, in the uh, title block, and we can take a look at some of the consultants that were involved in the project, if you'd like. And as you can see, there's, there was a few. And the uh, airport is open. But uh, these, are, uh, these are international firms that uh, are very well capable of using the software at a, a level way, way above me. But uh, again, there's room for you on the team. There's room for you on this team. And as you can see, um, these are the types of documents that, that you can produce. And it isn't an insurmountable task. It isn't an insurmountable task. We, we talked a little bit about grids, but again, if indeed you're interested in learning a little more, you can contact me. I've given you plenty of breadcrumbs, and we can discuss this a little bit deeper. So, again, I just want to just throw these out there just so you can take a look at it. We discussed a little bit about the grid guides and how important that is. We talked a little bit about the key plan, and we went into scale scale factor and things like that uh, but again this project uh, my uh, my responsibility was the uh, telecommunication distribution system uh, coordinating it within the 3d modeling uh, environment and uh, it was a success the project turned out really well um, i got more work done when i was alone than i did when the, i was with the rest of the office it would have been nicer if it was a little quieter in the office. But there were some gapayednas, uh, a lot of gapayednas in that office. But again, you have to overcome that. You have to overcome that. That's why I play wind chimes all the time. It helps me to, uh, to get into the zone. And anyone who's been following these videos can see that, uh, you know, that uh, eventually it's going gonna, it's gonna, to uh, vent itself. See vent through roof on the final. So, yeah, this would be an example of where you would receive a contract document set, and, and this is what the estimate and, and, and all the uh, and the numbers are based on. And your job is to get as close to the design intent as you can, and identify any uh, any clashes with the other trades along the way, and identify uh, identify those. And just conform with the um, with the design intent. And, um, as, as you can see, it, it's uh, it's pretty thorough. It's pretty thorough. So let me read this first passage. No set of documents is complete without the annotations to describe the drawings. Even when you're using a digital parametric model, you still need to provide annotated documents. It is necessary to add dimensions tags, text, and notes to the drawings to properly communicate with owners, contractors, and the rest of the design team. In this chapter, you'll learn to annotate with text and keynotes, use tags and dimensions, set project and shared parameters. Annotating with text and keynotes. Notes are a critical part of communicating design and construction intent to owners and builders. No drawing set is complete without descriptions of materials and the work, like the ones you can see in this particular figure, I guess, or the figures I've shown you. You can add notes to your drawings in order to have Revit software in two ways. And uh, we're going to get into that, so let me just get out of here before I uh, get too deep into it. But again, this is a very, very fascinating project, and uh, if it's your intent, to uh, dive into this, I, uh, I, I ask you, you know, if you want to subscribe, help me out, uh, or if you uh, want to follow along, silent witness, I'm, I'm all for that. That's not a problem. Um, again, because um, you may find yourself uh, one day, you know, getting in an office where you, you're working with uh, some of these professional folks, and, and you'll have to uh, you'll have to produce. So, um, it just so happens that this particular gentleman has a very, very large responsibility and plays a huge part in this project. So, in any event, 
I, I, I'm one of those folks that uh, I'm, I collect things. I collect things. And this is just such a nice seal that um, I'll save it for posterity. <laughs> they don't just give these away. These come with a, a, a certain degree of expertise. They don't just give these stamps to anybody. All right, so before I go off on a tangent, let's get back to Autodesk. Now, view. I have I rearranged my uh, my uh, browser. My uh, user interface. I have to get it back to normal. Just give me a second. Okay. Okay, so we're back in Revit. Now, notes are a critical part of uh, communicating design intent. And I'm going to multitask and um, try to stall a little bit just to see if indeed they use any example files, and they don't. There's a lot of uh, images in the book, but there, there aren't a lot of examples um, as far as opening up a... Um, Open up a sample file. So we may have to, uh, we'll see if I can get through this without um, having to come back and prepare some work because there's a lot to this. This is, uh, this is uh, it's very important, this part. A picture's worth a thousand words. Um, so uh, there's a lot of words that go into these sheets. And, and when you look at the sheer volume of it, you almost say to yourself, how could they possibly have done this? Um, as quickly as they can, you're thinking it would take you the, your whole entire life, and so far, to, for me, it has. So, um, you can add notes to your drawings and order this private software in two ways. Both are located on the Annotate tab. So, if I was to uh, go to, uh, let me open up, let me find some drawing I can find here. Let's see what I can use. What do we got? Go over here to Oops, I hit my network. Give me a second. It's late, and I put in a lot of hours today. I put in a lot of hours. But again, I'm getting so close to the end, I, uh, I'm eager to get it uh, complete. So just give this a second. Let's get into, uh, let's get into uh, some example I can give you here. Let's take a look. Let me see if I can. Hmm, presenting this for another. Uh, let's go into documents and see what we got here. We still we can go back to the. Sample building finish, what else we got here? We have annotating, right? Annotating, let's see what's in here. I'm probably gonna jump ahead a little bit. I probably shouldn't, because this exercise, um, you see there are gonna be some sample exercises that we're gonna use. So let's see if I can read through it, and, um, and I'll use a, uh, an architectural template. See what I'll do, um, I think maybe a good idea might be, I'm gonna use a commercial template. I'll use a commercial template. Let's go to um, C. Oops. Let's go to C. Let's go to uh, Revit. Let's go to Chapter uh, 11. MEP commercial. And that one's the uh, augmented one. Commercial arch. Let's go to this one. This is a consultant. They're on Lindia.com. If you're interested in this guy, he's, he's really good. He's a gold member certified Autodesk instructor, except that it costs a relatively large sum to, to view his videos. But again, you may find that's more your forte. His style's a bit different than mine. Let me just expand this and let's go to uh, level one. Let's take a look at that. Let's go to a nice color plan of the area. Take a look at that one. Maybe floor finish. Take a look at that one. Furniture plan. And then we'll just tile a few of these. Right? So we have some uh, working room. Was that WTZA, right? All right, so we have a whole bunch. We don't need the cover sheet open. ZA. So we got a furniture plan open, color plan, color fl uh, floor plan, floor finish, and then level one. So uh, again, you can um, add notes in uh, a few ways. So if you go up to the uh, annotate tab, One of these methods is the text, uh, the text command, and the 
the other is the keynote command. So um, as you can see, you have keynote, element keynote, material keynote, user keynote, and then keynote settings. And then you have the text command. Now, the text object consists of a resizable field into which you can enter text with optional features, including leaders, bullets, or numbers. Text can be used for annotations, sheet notes, such as general notes, or legends. It can be used generally anywhere you need to add a description or a note. Keynotes are predefined text fields that are linked to elements and materials through a data file. Keynotes can be scheduled and standardized across the project, but can't be directly edited within the application. Both keynotes and text have specific uses. Let's uh, look at how both of these can be used in a project. Text is quick and easy to add to any view, including 3D views. And like other drafting elements, it is view specific. Text added to one view will not appear in any other location within the model, nor will the information that you insert into the text box hold any sort of parametric values. You can access the text tool from the text panel on the annotate tab. To begin adding text, select the text tool and first observe the setting in the contextual ribbon. So why don't we go to a nice clean, a nice clean sheet here. Hold on a second. Let me find, a, let me go to the drafting view and we can maybe do it there. Actually, as a matter of fact, you know what? Why don't we start in the front? Why don't we start the front? Let me just collapse some of these. The whole entire project browser is, is open here. Let's go to the cover sheet. As you can see, there's a there's a view, there's an axonometric view on there and a drawing schedule list. Let's go to the sheet, uh, the drawing sheet for a second. I know I closed it. Let me just um, now I'm going to tile these views. Or I should say tab them. I'm sorry, it's late and I I've been burning the midnight oil. Dedication, that's one thing I bring to the table, work ethic and dedication. Um, but I'm, I'm more than cognizant of the fact that that uh, dad needs a vacation at least a, a, a day uh, away from this terminal. Um, because, uh, again, it doesn't come without a real, real... Uh, um, real sense of discipline. To, to put it lightly, you, you, you're going to have to put in the effort. So, accessing the text tool from the annotate tab, let's hover over it. And the shortcut here is TX. Adds text annotations and notes to the current view. Text notes automatically scale with the view. If you change the view scale, the text automatically resizes. Now, isn't that fantastic? It's annotative. Annotative. Uh, and I'm not going to go on a tangent. Okay, so to begin adding text, select the text tool and first observe the settings in the contextual ribbon. You can specify an option for a leader, the position of the leader, and the justification of the text. It is easier to set these options before you place, excuse me, before you place a text object, but they can always be adjusted later. Now you'll see the three panels that open up here, leader, alignment, and then text. And we can go through these if you'd like to a certain extent. If you just hover over this one, no leader, omits the leader line for the annotation, click in the drawing area where you want to, the text to begin. And then there's a two segment leader. Edge leader line consisting of a two straight line segments or a cattle call or a landing. The first click specifies the element or location to point to. The second click specifies the location of the elbow on the leader line. The third click specifies the location of the text. So it'll give you that landing, that little landing there. That's two segments. And, and I'll, I don't believe it goes into this as de in depth as I'm going into it here. And these are the types of things you're going to have to do. Hover over the tooltips. Experiment with the tooltips. I didn't get this far. Um, just 
reading it from the book. I had to go in and do some research and dissect the software to a certain extent. Anyway, I, I suggest you do the same if it's your intent to follow along or to tread your own path, plow your own way through. One segment adds a single street line, a street leader line from the text note to the specified location. The first click specifies the element or location to point to. The second click specifies the location of the text note. And then we have the curved. <sighs> and, and these are actually kind of cool. They're aesthetically pleasing and it adds a certain style to it. It's a curved leader line from the text notes to the specified location. The first click specifies the element or location to point to. The second click specifies the location of the text note. And if you look over here, leader at top left, leader at middle left, leader at bottom left, leader at top right, leader at middle right, leader at bottom right. And in AutoCAD, you have to set these styles up, text styles in order to get this. And it can be a little bit of a pain. The textiles, um, it shouldn't be that complicated. And, and, and it, there's a lot of dialog boxes, a lot of settings. And once you get it, it, it works fine. But the effort you have to put in to get it is a little more than this. The, the textile tools in AutoCAD can be pretty, uh, pretty intense. There are lots of settings. And you may find it may work well for you. With tolerances, Standard deviation, all those uh, built-in um, tools that you can plug away. And, and we're going to get into dimensions soon enough. We're talking annotations, so we're going to be talking about dimensions as well. And uh, you'll see, it's it's uh, just as intuitive, if not more. Now, I'm not going to read through all these text boxes, uh, the tool tips, but eventually we're going to have to, right? Now, um, and as you can see, just like any other word processing plat uh, platform, you have top left, align center, bottom, align right, spell check, and then find and replace, which is always a good tool, right? If you're looking for, you know, find all the words that you spelled wrong <laughs> or, or change uh, every word that conforms to a criteria that you set, right? You, you've seen that, find and replace. Right, so I'm not going to go into that, but you newbies, you might want to. Okay, so, um, yeah, uh, to begin in text, select the text alone first observe the settings in the contextual ribbon. You can specify an option for a leader, the position of the leader, and the justification of the text. And again, he said, or they said, it's easier to do the, uh, set these options before you place a text object, but they can be adjusted later. After you have selected the most appropriate settings for your annotation, go to a place in a view where you'd like to place the text object you'll have the opportunity to use one of two methods to create the text object. If you click once, the location you click will be the origin of the text object and the text will not have a defined width. Using this method, you may need to use the enter key to fit the text to your needs. Pressing enter will create a line break in the text, text box. This method may cause some difficulty in the future if you need to resize the text box or if you change the scale of the view. So it won't have a defi defined, if you click once, it won't have a defined, that was one click. If you click once, the location you click will be the origin of the text object. The text will not have a defined width. Using this method, you may need to use the enter key to fit the text to your needs. Right? If I mean, this, I'm just in the space bar. Now I have a paragraph, right? I have like a paragraph. So what they're saying, though, is if you just click once and then start tech and start typing, and then click again to get out of there, you know, you may not have the ability to have it fit your needs. As you can see, you can drag this text box over. You can rotate the text, right? You can stretch the box, right? And get these, you know, get these grips. But notice again, it's not too difficult. It's not an insurmountable task. It's something you could do. It just seems intimidating because it's uh, architecture, right? Architecture. <laughs> it just seems intimidating. It's not. 
don't get me wrong, uh, there's some really, really intelligent people in this business. But again, you know your place and, and then you'll have no problem. As long as you can effectively communicate to a certain extent, and you'll be fine. Now, yeah, so using this method, you may need to use the enter key to fit the text to your needs. Pressing enter will create a line break in the text box. This method may cause some difficulty in the future if you need to resize the text box or if you change the scale of the view. Well, let's just do that for a second. Now, we're in the, um, the sheet, so um, I really can't change the scale here. Let me just get rid of this and let's just go use an example where we can change the scale of the view. Let's come down here and um, what I'd like to do is, um, again, I would probably use Keynote for this, but uh, let's just create a uh, so text note right here. And I'll just write um, text note one. And I'll just hit that. Now, now, if you notice, if I select it, it's three thirty seconds of an inch. So um, if I was to go into, uh, let's see here if I can find it. Standard annotation scaling parameters. I have this on my hard drive somewhere, but um, let's see if I can find it here really quick. I don't know if I can, I probably can. But um, you know what? I I'm pretty sure I have it on my uh, my uh, my Google Drive. So if you just bear with me a second, I'll I'll give you an example of uh, what I'm talking about. Um, let me see if I can go to my Google Drive. Just go to home for a second. Give me a second. Um, I don't have it set up just just yet. To so give me there it is. Okay, hold on. Let's go here for a second. See so I can find it. Let's see if it's, yeah, no, it's in my OneDrive. It's in my OneDrive. And again, it's late, so bear with me. Bear with me. Before. And again, I, I've been having a bit of a difficulty with uh, with my OneDrive. I probably should do it from here. It'd probably be my best bet to do it from here. Just give me a second. I gotta find this. This is important. Let me just get this down to where it was. <laughs> now, let's see here. Just give me a second. I'm not signed in. That's probably one of the reasons I can't see anything at all. Just bear with me. Like I said, uh, I'm trying to get through this on one take. I, uh, it'll be advantageous to everyone. It'll definitely be advantageous to all of us. If I can just get through this on one take. I was trying to be long on the tooth. to use Microsoft uh, Edge that often anymore, um, only because of the, uh, the uh, tracking cookies. Here it is. It was some file I created years ago just to help me uh, keep this a little more concise. So, um, yeah, it's saying um, it is easy to set these options before you place a text object. If you've selected the most appropriate settings for your annotation, go into to a place in a view where you'd like to place a text object. You have the opportunity to use one of the two methods to create the text object. If you click once, you saw that um, you'll have to, uh, to uh, continue typing, and eventually you're going to have to hit enter if you want to get it to fit, uh, create a line break, and all that. Let's just go up here for a second. Now, We, we talked earlier that um, these uh, text items or these text elements are view specific, and uh, they're, they're, they have uh, you know, the, the text box hold any uh, sort of parametric parametric values, and that they're uh, they're annotative. So uh, if you change the scale, 
you'll, you'll, the text will adjust accordingly. So I just wanted to show you something. This is a good chart to use. Um, let's use, um, let's use eighth inch, for example. So now, if you, if you have different scales, you'll have different scale factors. Well, these ratios, the golden ratio, will give you a factor. And then that factor, um, you would apply to a text element to um, be able to see it at a certain scale. Now, think about this for a second. If you have a building that's 200 feet, and you have it on a piece of paper, you would have to zoom out. You would zoom your camera out a certain factor so that you could see it all. But if you were to draw the text full size, which you would, let's say an eighth of an inch, you wouldn't necessarily see it. It would be so tiny. You wouldn't be able to see an eighth of an inch. At eighth of an inch equals a foot, it would be so tiny, right? So, a good eighth is always a good example because it's, you figure, if you look, eighth of an inch at one inch equals a foot, in order to get it to display, you would have to draw it at one and a half inches. And if you wanted to display an eighth of an inch at three quarters of an inch equals a foot, you would have to make the eighth of an inch text really two inches. And so, uh, and, and subsequently this up the scale, right? Up, up, up the neck of the guitar or the keys of the piano. So, again, I'm going to get out of here. An eighth of an inch equals a foot. So if you wanted an eighth inch plotted height, you would have to uh, make sure the text height was 12 inches. Now, in AutoCAD, if you were uh, drawing in model space, that's, and, and you put your title block on model space and scaled it up 96 times, the scale factor, then your text would have to be drawn at 12 inches. Now, you wouldn't scale the text up, after you drew it at 12 inches, you would scale your title block up. If your text was at eighth of an inch, and you multiplied it by 96 and selected everything inclusive of the text that was at eighth of an inch full size. When you scaled it up 96 times, it would be 12 inches. And, and that's uh, something I, I just wanted to show you here. That's always important. And um, I touched earlier on the the, uh, the area of some of the paper sizes. So um, you can see uh, ANSI A, Architectural E, NCB, some custom sizes I had created, and then some Architectural D, Architectural B, uh, and this is some other stuff that I had created down the road. So, um, yeah, um, this is kind of important. This is kind of important because you only have a certain amount of real estate on a piece of paper, especially since it's, indic it's indicative of the plat map that you're working on. So uh, I just wanted to grab that real quick to discuss it because what it's telling us is that if we change the scale, and if you look, this is 3 seconds of an inch, right? If I change this to one inch, you notice the text inversely proportional to the scale factor scaled itself down and remained at 3 seconds of an inch. 3 seconds of an inch. Hold on, I actually moved something that wasn't pinned. Right, and that's, I know it's a long way to go to explain that, but uh, I'll do it again. And I'll do it the opposite direction. Now the view scale's uh, 16, right? So the view scale was six. Uh, it's it's a sixteenth of an inch, equals a foot, right? So uh, in that case, in that case, if I can find uh, where it went, there it is. In that case, right? A sixteenth of an inch. Uh, it's 192 times. Now, I don't have um, the 330, well, I do, 330 seconds of an inch. So, basically, it's uh, 18 inches, right? If you think about it, 18 inches. Because we multiply the 16th to times 192. All right, so uh, that's the concept behind that. That's the concept behind that. Uh, and that's important to understand. Or well, you're going to get confused. And, and I know folks that... Well, their, their careers are ending. They're coming to retirement age. And it still hasn't read, it, it just hasn't gotten through. 
And I wouldn't want to see you fall victim to that. So, indeed, the software does um, provide annotative text. Um, now, the other option is to hold down the left mouse button while you click to place the origin of the text. So, if I was to do it again, hold down the left mouse button while you click to place the origin of the text, then drag the mouse pointer to specify the boundary of the text object creating a box. Don't worry about the vertical extents of the boundary. You just need to set the width of the text box. Using this option gives you greater flexibility if you need to resize the text box or if the scale of your view changes because the word wrapping will be handled automatically with the text command active. You'll be presented with the standard mouse pointer crosshair, but it will have a small A in the lower right corner to let you know you are adding text and not other elements. In, this, in either case, if you need to adjust the width of the, your text box, you can do so at any time using the grips. All right, so you can do so at any time using the grips with two eyes. Okay, well, there are the grips. Right? Now, it said that if we adjust the scale, we would have, it would keep the word wrapping, right? It would keep the word wrapping. Now, if you think it's a good idea to do this manually and, and, and grab this text and then scale it up to make it big enough or smaller, because the engineer can't see or he doesn't like that size or she doesn't like that size, you're not going to be around very long and you're going to waste your time. You're going to become frustrated. And I wouldn't want to see that happen to you. Uh, this is an intuitive tool. It was designed so that you, you wouldn't do that. All right. So <clears throat> it gives you greater flexibility. If you select one of the leader options in the ribbon before placing the text object, your first one or two clicks, depending on the leader option selected, will be to place the leader. For example, if you choose the two segment line leader option, your first click will be the arrowhead of the leader, your second click will be the elbow of the leader, and then the third click will be the beginning of the text box. At this third click, you could still drag the mouse pointer to predefine the width of the text box. Try this a few times until you become familiar with the implicit placement and snapping alignment of text objects and leaders. So if we were to go ahead and get out of here, excuse me, let's go to annotate um, text. And if we're gonna, let's say we do a uh, two segments, right? If we were to click here, zoom in a little bit here, you see, it's orthographically. It lets you orthographically align the leader so that it's it's uh, parallel to the uh, x plane, or parallel to the y axis, I should say. And it's a lot easier than having to turn on your dynamic snap in AutoCAD or your uh, your um, ortho on, ortho off hitting F8 on the keyboard all the time. So the next pick is going to, if I hold it, it's going to define the text box, but notice how it's upper left, right? Upper left. It's not, you can decrease in, and notice what happens within the context of doing it, huh? You got bullet, list bullets, list numbers, uppercase letters, lowercase letters, superscript, subscript, underline, in italics, bold. All caps, you can change all the caps, copy and paste, and all those good things that you can do anything else. But what you can't do um, until after is set the leader line to be placed within the uh, top threshold of the text box, the middle threshold of the text box, or the lower left corner of the text box, right? We discussed that. So I was to say, um, there are many variables to consider in this endeavor, right? 
you'll see it's the top left. Now, now that it's done, if I was to hit it, it didn't, you see how it didn't make much of a difference? I, I can't, because I'm still within the context of the command, right? I can't change that. I can't change whether it's center justified or if it's left justified or any of those things. So let's click it for a second and then let's, now let's select it and see if we have that option. See, now we have the option after we can complete the command. As a matter of fact, we can remove the last leader as well, right? So there's a lot of things we could do. Let me uh, add it back again. Now it's a little different, but that's okay. I, I want to not be able to select the floor. and It's driving me batty. <laughs> I don't want to be able to select that. Um, hold on a second. Right, so I'll, I'll still be able to select it. And so that's a very intuitive tool. It doesn't really take that much to figure that out, right? Um, listen, I'm not a rocket scientist by any stretch of the means, and I sure as hell don't hold a doctorate or a master's. Uh, I don't. But I, I uh, can get, I can meander myself through uh, the circles I wish. So let's just drag it up a little bit. Let's see if we can manipulate this a little bit by grabbing the grips. That one gives a little bit of difficulty. But this one, again, you see you can you do these things, but this is something that will actually probably cost you more time. And I still am selecting that damn floor, and it won't let me not select it. And uh, it is that damn floor. It's pinned. That's why I can't... Uh, hold on a second. I want to... Uh, just let me pin it for a second, and then not be able to select pins. Okay. It's pinned, and I can't select anything that's pinned. And again, this is a little small. So I have to keep zooming in to see it. Wouldn't it be more prudent? I mean, just, especially at this hour, um, to make it a little bigger so I could see it. That's a little bit too big. But let me go down and let's say quarter inch. That's a little better. Let me get rid of this. It's irritating me. All right. So let me get rid of this. Get rid of this one too. It's overlapping. All right. So uh, I'm just going to uh, delete this one and I'm going to do it again. So just to give you an idea. So I click the text. I got the, the two segments. One segment. I will try the. We'll try the curve this time. And I'm going to click a point. Let's say I want to, I don't know, I'm going to annotate this column. I'm going to pick one point, drag the, um, the curve over to here, click the second point, and I, I let go of the mouse, uh, left mouse button. And now I don't have the luxury. I mean, it'll still, I can still, but you see how it's a little more, it's a little trickier, right? It's a little trickier. Now if I was to come out of here, I was to maybe center justify it, left justify it, um, move this to the middle. Um, you still have the option of selecting the box and doing some things. But um, as you can see, uh, it doesn't take much. So, um, yeah, that's one of the ways in which you can annotate with this uh, text tool. Now, let me just continue reading along. And I'll finish with this. Uh, in the case, if you need to adjust the width of your text box, you can do so at any time using the grips. And if you just select it, you see that, right? You can select the grips. Okay, now, if you select one of the leader options in the ribbon before placing the text object, your first one or two clicks, depending on the leader you select, will, uh, will be to place the leader. Um, and we talked about this, and I'm uh, reading back what I already read through. So it says try it a few times, and I would suggest either during the exercise or after it, you do the same. Once you place a text object in a view, you can write as much as you do in applications such as Microsoft Word. Once you finish typing, click the outside the text box. Your finished text box will look like the figure that's kind of on the screen. With the text box selected, as you, or as you're typing, you'll notice some text formatting features. For anyone familiar with any other text editor, these tools should be fairly self-explanatory. And for anyone familiar with Revit over the past few years, these come as some long sought after text editing improvements. The tools will allow you to do the following. Format the font to bold, italic, or underlined text. Add subscripts or superscripts. Change the font size visually. Add bullets, numbers, or alphabetical lists. Indent texts. Change the position of text in a list by adding or removing incremental tabulation. Change the position of text in a list by adding and removing incremental tabulation, right? Incremental tabulation, right? We have a list. So 
So, again, you mess around with that, you'll see if you want to do uh, ABC and all that good stuff. So, you be able to format your paragraphs correctly. And, and you won't have that, that enter symbol. Like they got in word that'll drive you up a wall, like it does to me. I'm not a secretary. I'm not a secretary. Or I'm not a word perfect uh, Lotus Notes folk uh, guy. I have my strengths and my weaknesses. Sleep is starting to become one of my weaknesses. I'm going to have to hit the sack soon. But I want to get as much as I can out of this tonight. You'll also notice that once you finish with your initial text or you select an existing text object, a few tools are available with which you can modify the text grips. The round grips on either side of the text box allow you to resize the width of the box. Move. There's a move icon that appears in the upper left corner of the text box. In addition, hovering your mouse anywhere within the highlighted text will also display a move cursor. Anywhere within the highlighted text. Oops. Let me highlight the text. Well, I don't see the move cursor. When I hover, let's get out of there for a second. Well, you, yeah, well, once you, you have to select it, hover over it, and then select. Hold on. Hover over it. Nope. No, I didn't get you. Until that tool tip comes up. Hold on. Hover over it. Now you can drag it. Once you see that, uh, the descriptive text, see that? Text notes, text 330 seconds, Arial. Once you see that pop up, if you select it then, then you have an option to move it. But before it comes up and you select it, you, you'll be inside the text box doing, doing editing. So you have to play around with that until you become comfortable with it, and it'll be second. It'll become a, a second nature and an extension, and to your creativity. And through this, you will realize great architecture. I still love that passage. All right. So yeah, um, you can click and drag from within the box, or click the move icon on the upper left corner to relocate it. When you're moving text with the move icon or the move command, the text and leader will relocate together. When you're moving text by dragging, the leader end will remain pinned while you relocate the text box. When you're moving text by dragging, the leader will remain pinned. Okay. Well, let's select it and move the, use the move tool. Huh? That's kind of kind of nice. It anchors it to the uh, the element that you're trying to uh, to describe. It'll just stay there, and then it'll be—it'll even flip back and forth. And you know, I've listen. I've been in shops where I just came from Dow Design Group. He had text blocks that were two different text blocks that had the arrow on the left and the arrow on the right. And he had—he created blocks for this. It's ridiculous. It was ridiculous. But what am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? And then tell them, you know, listen, this is the, the this is the future. What am I gonna do? I can't do that. I even hinted at it, and they all got an attitude. So what are you gonna do? Yeah, yeah. I preach. I, I complain, but who'd listen? You know, what are you gonna do? You can't teach an old dog new tricks. And now the kid's gone. Who knows what's going on over there? I, I, I can tell you from my experience over there on each street here in Bayonne with that architect that that's the two principles. They they rely heavily on their draftsmen, and um, they're going to have to collectively between the two of them find the right one. And if they do, that conforms to their methods, then fine. They're still going to be the old methods. Sorry, it's just how it is. I'm I'm, I'm not. Being facetious, I'm not being malicious. I'm just telling you the truth. Cross my heart, hope to die. Scout's honor. Right? I've seen this in, in, in th throughout offices in Manhattan. You know, and, and they're adamant about it. They're adamant. And, and if you challenge some of these folks, they'll uh, they'll they'll send you they'll send you back and because they. They've enamored themselves in a comfort zone and they've convinced their superiors um, that their process works and to a certain extent it does, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's efficient. That doesn't necessarily mean it's streamlined. It just means that no one has taken the, no one has taken the time 
to come in and analyze the workflow to, to, to realize efficiencies. And, and, and that's what a consultant can do. Unfortunately, if anyone's watched Office Space, sometimes you have to clean your house in order to get that done. And, uh, and, and if you're having a problem in your organization, and you, a problem is, you know, uh, and you, know, you, you need some help, listen, my phone's always on. My, if you want to talk, I, uh, listen, there's absolutely no reason why I can't throw some, uh, some dirt on my shirt and a dirty tie and a wrinkled shirt and go into your office as, a, you know, an idiot. <laughs> and, and they'll treat me just like that. And I don't have to necessarily know that I know anything. I could just basically go in and, and pretend I'm stupid. And I can ascertain. That's the best way to do it. They'll tip their hand. They feel that, you know, by your appearance, you're superior. It's a lot easier to get much more information out of them than to go in there. Young, buck, straight out of Oxford. Uh, you know, uh, they'll tend to uh, show the true colors. You know, you, you can tell a lot by uh, an organization's uh, management. They treat their, their their subordinates. You can tell a lot about an organization that way. If you looked at some of my older videos, you can see how it. For her, you, you wanna you wanna just uh, start shooting. Uh, Jump at the bit. Let me tell you something. I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. And uh, you, again, you, uh, you rock the boat sometimes. You know, they'll, uh, they'll figure out a way to discredit you. And if you look a certain way, it's going to be a lot easier for them. So, um, yeah, just a little bit about me. And, and, and I'm cognizant of it. <laughs> and whether or not you're aware of this or not, I can decompress. And I don't necessarily need to wear my heart on my sleeve. And I don't necessarily have to, uh, to become elevated, my, uh, my personality under pressure. Uh, it's only when, you know, it, the walls are closing in and you're, you're going to have to pack up and move because you're, the money, uh, the pressure really, really gets to me when the money's running out. Money is security. If you have money in your pocket, you're not going to be as worried about, you know, you're not going to be as worried, as neurotic. Sure, you know, ph pharmaceuticals play into it, but for Christ's sakes, a bunch of money in the bank, you tend to behave a different way. Money is security. That's why they call them security. All right, so again, I'm only answer that, but I'm telling you, as God is my, as God is my witness, I would not lead you down the wrong I would not lead you down the wrong path. Now, this method lets you move the text or the, or the text and the leader, depending on your need. Rotate. The upper right the rotate icon. Clicking this icon allows you to rotate the text box as you would any object in a, any object. The text will always position itself to read left to right if it is horizontal or bottom, if it is vertical in the view. The text behaves like other families because it maintains a parametric relationship throughout the project, making type proper text objects in one location, changing uh, the, the font, font size, color, and so on all the instances of that type throughout the model. To modify text type properties, block of text, choose the text tool, and then observe the properties palette. And we're looking at it. It behaves just like any other family. And as you can see, there's actually a few. We have four different styles. We have four different types in this family. Support is uh, giving me issues today. Wow. Right, so, and, and all types my mouse is really giving me issues. Hold on. You see that um, there are some parameters associated with text 
and you can add more. Uh, we talked about this a little bit. Notice how um, well, there's ways it would. I can't get into all these right now. And my mouse is barely working. I may have to go back to using my finger on the keypad. All right, so this is more of a bold text style. And now my, my mouse isn't working. I'm dead in the water. <laughs> anyway, hold on, let's go. Let me get out of this. Uh, All right, so uh, this video's running really long. And uh, I'm going to break this up into a few different uh, videos. So i got to hit the stack. All right, so um, a text family behaves like other families because it maintains a parametric relationship throughout the project. And that also goes for human beings. The apple don't fall too far off the tree. Making type property changes to a text object in one location changes it in all instances of that type throughout the model. To modify text type properties, select a block of text to choose and then observe the properties palette. And again, if you want to change, make a new one, just duplicate it and change the text size and font and all that stuff that you want. And if you want to give it a unique name, then so be it. And it would be saved in the annotations, right? If you wanted to save this family out, you would be able to save it out as an, annot as an annotation family, right? So if we see annotation symbols, you can see these annotation symbols, right? So, um, yeah, all that stuff. Now, that being said, um, you double check my math on that if you want. The instance properties for text objects are rather limited and deal primarily with controls such as alignment, location, and so on, which you can also set on the ribbon. The type selector also allows you to select a different type, a text type, or edit the properties of the currently selected type. Click the Edit Type button to open the text family's type properties. Shows, uh, and that'll show, again, like I just showed, whoops. Um, the text type, uh, the family's type properties. Um, you'll see that dialog box. In the type properties dialog box, you have more control over the style of the text from a type perspective. While you can now edit specific text in a text box, there are still many reasons that you might want to control the text with a type tool. In a type selector, you can modify text type properties such as font size and width factor. You can also add formatting to the text such as bold, italic, and underline. Other important settings to consider include show border, background, and reader arrowhead. The show border property simply allows all the text object instances to be enclosed with a line boundary. And HVAC folks do this a lot. The mechanical contractors tend to do this. Um, with a lot of their tags as well. Um, and I emulated it. Um, now, the background property can be set to either opaque or transparent, and that's a pain in the butt when you get one of their drawings, you have to overlay it in AutoCAD, and all of their texts, all their text styles have a, uh, 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 you know, a, an opaque background. It's going to mask everything uh, on your uh, background that you're using. Let's say if you're using the electrical design set or the electrical contract CAD drawings that you received as, a, as an underlay, and then you want to overlay the mechanicals on it, or the mechanical shop drawings on, over, on top of yours. And their text has test ma text masking on. Well, it's going to really screw you up, because it's going to be over your drawing. And this is where CAD falls way, way short. They're going to put you, they're going to, they're going to run you in circles. These mechanical contractors don't play. And I can name names. Some of them put me on the street. They're that good. They're that good. You know, but, uh, you know, I had the last coordination meeting, I think we made our peace. <laughs> In any event, it is what it is. So I, I don't hold any animosity, you know. A lot of, a lot of other folks probably go off the deep end, and I have a little bit. But you know what? You have to have going through it so often and persisting and, and not blaming everyone else in the world. And I have, I cast blame around a little bit, but if you, if you, uh, if you want to fool yourself and, uh, and, and make up uh, stories as to why you're no longer working somewhere um, and not admit the truth to yourself why you aren't. Mm -hmm. you're, gonna live, you're gonna live a lifetime of lying to yourself, right? Listen, you know your shortcomings, you focus on them. You focus on your shortcomings and then you overcome whatever prohibiting you from moving forward. That's how you do it. Not putting your hands up and it's very easy to blame. But again, you point one finger at somebody, you point two back at yourself. So again, lots of different circumstances. Uh, lots of different circumstances. But uh, again, water under the bridge. All right, so I gotta get through this, I gotta get to sleep. Um, yeah, bold, uh, letter ar uh, leader arrowhead, show border, opaque, transparent, which control whether the text will obscure objects beneath it. Finally, the style of leader arrowhead is defined in the text type properties to help you maintain consistency 
uh, throughout your design can talk um, your design documents. So we talk about this a little bit, and you have uh, many of them, right? But notice the uh, size, right? Notice the size. Notice the size range, right? A sixteenth of an inch, eighth of an inch, three sixty fourths, right? When you think about it, um, depending on the size of paper, um, you're going to need to possibly create different textiles. If, uh, you know, uh, you're, you're working at different scales, you may need a few different styles, different uh, 330 seconds, eighth of an inch, a sixteenth, maybe even a quarter of an inch. And maybe you have really old folks there that can't see. You may need to throw it up to, uh, you know, a few, uh, few 30 seconds higher. Uh, five sixty-fourths. <laughs> Seven sixty-fourths. But to see, the thing about architecture is that um, these, these numbers are uh, multiples, and um, there are some, these numbers are prime in some instances, and um, it is a rhyme and a reason to why um, this, this, the paper and the scale and the size of the text uh, all interweave to produce the entire document. And I'm trying to put this in better terms for you. Um, standard annotation scaling parameters, they're directly and inversely proportioned to each other. That's the best way I can say it. They're directly and inversely proportional to each other. The paper, the object, and the text. And all of the elements that go into the annotation, uh, denotation objects, like leaders, right? So uh, the worst thing you, you, you want is to have just uh, ridiculously sized text. Um, in any event, I could see up to 330 seconds of an inch with my class. Okay, now contextual text formatting. I gotta go to bed. We're not gonna talk about that yet. That's the end of the, uh, the, uh, the, the instruction for this uh, lesson. Maintaining consistency throughout your design documentation. And that goes from my persona as well. Uh, I'm not that naive uh, to not have taking a step back and looking back in retrospect and seeing exactly the remnants of the, uh, uh, <laughs> the magnetic field. Which is, uh, I'll just let you know, um, some folks uh, can deliberately just piss you off uh, and, and you kind of pray they just go away so you can do your job in peace. And I was fortunate enough on my last project to have that happen. I, I had a, an irritant in my shoe, and they sent it packing, and I appreciate the sentiment, because the project wouldn't have gotten done if it hung around. Sometimes uh, cancers come into the team, and they have to be dealt with accordingly. Well, folks can't do their jobs if, if there's a thing running around the office causing disruptions. Well, it, it's, it's just not going to uh, be conducive to the well-being of the team. And that goes for me as well. So uh, this is the uh, regular mic that's not under the gun, constantly under the gun. <laughs> but then again, listen, uh, where I came from was a boot camp. It was a boot camp. So would you expect anything else but PTSD afterwards? Probably not. Anyway, this is an educational assessment, assessment on both ends of the spectrum. And whether or not you and I are well within our faculties is something that you're going to have to base on your perspective of me, and I'll base on my perspective of you when, uh, indeed, we do collaborate together. In the interim, let's just stay cool, right? And let's get some sleep, because this one uh, went a little long. So, uh, again, we're going to be getting into assigning keynotes, and, and again, this is where it's really going to really demonstrate its power of extracting a lot of this data. So stay tuned if you're interested, stay tuned if you're curious, stay tuned if you're mad at me, stay, stay tuned if you like me, Just stay tuned, <laughs> that's the key, right? Stay tuned and don't trip, and try not to blow a gasket. And I'll do my best not to blow another one. I just got this gasket fixed.